All right, guys, let's get started. This is Rob, the president of ACMG Sales. Hope everybody's well today. Thank you, everybody that's attending. Um, so guys, last week, we did an introduction to the Child Millionaire um, program. You know, this thing's so powerful um, and a lot to go over. It's a, lot, it's a lot to cover within an hour. So today, we're going to do like an advanced training on it and really dive into it. We're not going to really have a time limit on this. We're going to take as long as it as long as we feel necessary to really dive into infinite banking and the concept with these life insurance policies and all of the powerful tools within the child millionaire office. Um, so we're gonna keep everybody on mute. Any questions that anybody has, please just drop them in the chat box. I wanna introduce Cole Snell and Leandro Fernandez. They're the driving force behind this and they're gonna be quarterbacking today's presentation. Um, thank you guys, take it over Cole. Thanks, Rob. Super appreciate the opportunity to be here. Blessed to meet you all. Today, we're going to dive into, uh, just as Rob said, uh, the future, the uh, future and the present of what we believe is now called the financial uh, financial industry. Um, Leo, if you want to uh, go ahead and we'll just dive right into the slide presentation. I think it pretty much says it all. So what we're going to do today, folks, is we're going to take you through a, uh, a slide presentation and then we're going to show you some actual tools. And because we are going to look at this as more of an advanced training, we encourage you to um, interact with us. There's going to be a few times throughout the presentation that I'm going to actually ask you to engage. If you could engage into the chat, Leo is going to monitor the chat uh, for me. And I'm sure Rob and some of his team will do that as well. And we'll, we'll pause every, say, 20 minutes or half an hour to uh, answer some of those questions. We're going to be pretty free, free flowing. Before anything, uh, I want to just kind of tell you a little bit about my story. I'm the founder of this company. Uh, Leandro is our COO of uh, U.S. operations. And we're basically completely uh, obsessed with value, and we're completely obsessed with assets. See, the problem is right now is that the average North American, 47% of North Americans are essentially $200 away or less from insolvency. So I kind of started looking at this as a founder entrepreneur for some 30 years, I've been tasked with finding solutions to problems. So when I find a problem, I see that as opportunity. I see that as a way to add value. I looked at the stat that I just dropped and I realized to myself, okay, that's a problem. Well, before I find a solution to a problem, I have to understand why. Why is this in fact a problem? Why is this happening? Why are 47% of North Americans, Canadians and Americans, $200 away or less from insolvency. If you think about what I'm saying right now, it's actually true. You don't have to think very far to understand what I'm talking about. Really what I'm saying is this, are people paycheck to paycheck? And if so, why? Well, here's the why. Let's look at the traditional financial buckets that we've been prescribed to create something called retirement. Uh, I call this the, uh, the R word. Um, maybe I should call it an F word. I liked, I, if I could come up with an F word to describe retirement, I would. But see, it's a failed system. Again, why is it failed? 47% of North Americans are $200 away or less from insolvency. So what financial strategy, strategies have we been force-fed and prescribed? What financial strategies are many of you selling, really? And are you selling the traditional strategies that have got us where we are today? And why we are where we are today has a lot to do with, well, it's not an R word, which was retirement. It is an actual F word. And I'm going to say it. Are you ready? I'm going to drop an F word. Fear. Fear of financial literacy. That's actually two F words. Fear of financial literacy. That's a thing. Financial literacy is dead. It's a horse that we have beaten. What we need and the solution to that problem, and I'm going to unpack the problem, is something called financial stewardship. Financial stewardship is different than financial literacy. Financial literacy is trying to understand the difference between an amortized interest, simple interest, and compounded interest. Good luck to the average North American, that's $200 away or less from insolvency. Who wants to learn that kind of stuff? And why they don't is because a confused mind says, no, this stuff is confusing. What does a confused mind do? It runs away. Why is it confused? Because it's afraid of what it doesn't know. What is sustainable, however, is financial uh, stewardship. Financial stewardship is actions. Financial stewardship is generational actions passed down because of your good behavior, your children's good behavior when they become parents and stewards, their children, their children, and then their children again. We might be in the pay it forward generation, I call it. We may be in the generation that needs to start to act as the steward. 
I challenge all of you advisors to do something that the late great R. Nelson Nash did, which was called building the 10%. Some, most, if not all of you know what infinite banking is. It carries with it a lot of uh, misinformation. I'm gonna to talk today a lot about what infinite banking is not. I think the easiest way to understand what infinite banking is, is to understand first off what it's not. There's more information about what infinite banking is not in the marketplace right now. I'm an, a licensed infinite banking practitioner, probably with the Nelson Nash Institute, and I work out of uh, one of the top infinite banking brokerages in North America. All we do at our agency called Ascended Financial is actual infinite banking. It's what led me to the ultimate solution to the ultimate problem of 47% of North Americans being $200 away from insolvency, which is the fact that we need to be stewards. Stewards to who? Stewards to our children. That's what we need to be. A steward to our children means designing policies and strategies that are actionable, that are easy to understand and generational things that just work. What is it? We call it child millionaire. How do we do it? We build through the lens of a child for the parents and the grandparents, high cash value, whole life insurance contracts, whole life insurance contracts, again, through the lens of infinite banking. Now I'm going to drop into the slides. I want to introduce to you more importantly, my good friend and my colleague, Leo, Leo, Leandro Fernandez. Leo, you can call him Leo. Leo is a remarkable guy. How I met Leo was about a year ago. I was scouring Facebook, trying to develop a tribe of people who understood the power of what I'm talking about right now. And lo and behold, I found Leo. He designed a program similar to this. We said, hey, instead of competing, let's read from the chapter of the book called Collaboration. It comes a time in any business where people need to collaborate, not always, but sometimes. Today is the chapter of collaboration within the financial industry due to the fact that we need to build the 10%. I'm going to unpack that really quickly. Building the 10% essentially means, and this is what this gentleman right here, R. Nelson Nash, that wrote this book, prescribed. The 10% is this. When 10% of advisors understand how to use life insurance, whole life insurance, not for death benefit, but for living benefit, when they can look at whole life insurance from a conceptual perspective, understanding that we need to rethink our thinking and pass that forward in an actionable way through financial stewardship, not financial literacy. So you are all here today to be take part in the 10%. I can't wait to unpack for you what infinite banking is and most importantly, what it is not. We definitely know that the most effective way to apply the infinite banking concept to any financial strategy period without argument in a very critical fashion is through the lens of a child. For a high net worth individual, a business owner, a corporation, what have you, the easiest way to explain it to these people, again, is through the lens of a child. Why? Because people will do for a child, which they will not do for themselves. So as I'm talking to you about this tool today, and actually Leo is going to take you through the actual steps of the tool, I'm going to break down the infinite banking concept and how it relates to the back end of this tool and the front end. The back end is the product. The front end is the concept. We call it IBC, the infinite banking concept, because it's really not about the product. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now that's really going to confuse you. It has less to do with the product than it does the concept. And believe it or not, and this is controversial because a lot of people don't like to hear it, but I have to say it, it has nothing. Intentional pregnant pause. That's what I just did there. It's called the pregnant pause to create effect. Okay. It has nothing to do with rate. I know you're thinking, how can it not? We're in the financial industry. It has everything to do with control. Okay, and we're gonna break that down. We're gonna talk mathematically why this has nothing to do with rate. Uh, and I'm doing that to kind of keep you engaged. Here we go. All right, Leo Fernandez, let's fire it up. Here's the bottom line. By the end of this presentation, we will show you how to add at least $60 per year to your practice and send your business to the moon. You will be on a, on a, on a jet to the moon, the planet of your choice, You'll be with uh, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. <laughs> You'll be in the arms race because right now we are we are in an arms race. We're these guys are in an arms race to get to, to to Mars, I suppose. But we are in an arms race right now as advisors to find a solution to a problem. All right, that's the bottom line: sixty grand. Oh, and I'm going to hit you with a slide at the very end of this that's going to blow your mind. So at the very end of this presentation, you're going to see a slide that is uh, is going to is going to blow your mind. I'm actually going to show you how you can make money if I don't do what I say I'm going to do. That goes for Leo as well. Again, I'm Cole Snell. That is 
Leo Fernandez. We are both licensed advisors um, and uh, very, very passionate, as you can tell, about what we're about to show you. Let's fire it up, Leo. Good man. All right. Here's a number for you. Very powerful number, 90%. Okay. I talked about the 10% earlier. Here's the other half of it. We as advisors have an obligation. We, have a, we all got into financial advising because we want to help people. And we also want to make some money. That's a good thing. Have your cake and eat it too. How often do you get to make a bunch of money and help a bunch of people? What, make, what product makes you more money than any other product in the financial industry right now? Well, it's whole life insurance. There's no argument there. You get paid better selling whole life insurance. The problem is people don't know how to sell whole life insurance because when they think sell, they think it's a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. Sell is value. You have to understand that the road of value is a two-way street. There's no parking lot on the road of value. There's no gray area on the road of value. You're doing one of two things. You're adding it or you're extracting it. If you're adding value by something you're selling, you're having your cake and eating it too. You're helping people and making a bunch of money. If you're extracting value, you're not helping people and you're not making a bunch of money. Give me one business in the world that is successful for more than about two years with that model. There are not many. The average number of insurance agents who are out of business within three years. And the question is why? Why are they? 90% is the number of advisors who are out of business in a matter of three years. Two to three years. The question is why? Well, according to advisor coach, so this guy is advisor coach. His name is James Pollard. He's written over six books on a very critical assessment of the financial industry. Some of, or most of you have heard of him. He has a podcast, et cetera. Here's his quote. Most insurance agents quit when they aren't able to generate business in quantities greater enough to sustain themselves. Frankly, they never learned sales and marketing. Well, they never learned how to add value. All right, Leo. Here's, the, here's another quote. If there are 500,000 insurance professionals in America, and there, that's about what it is, 494,000 of them sound exactly the same. Here's how you show up different. We have the tools for you to open those doors. 65%, here's another number, of the population are visual learners. Most of us try to sell using printed illustrations. We can show you a better way. A confused mind does what? <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I look at spreadsheets that I've never seen before, and I'm sitting in a financial meeting before I got into this industry, um, my mind was confused. I mean, my mind's confused anyway on the best of days. What does a confused mind do? Well, we know what it does. It says no. It shuts down. It goes into fight or flight. Here's the F word, fear. Fear of finance. Here's the market. We're going to break it down. This is why the child market is the largest untapped market. The child market is the gateway. It's the portal. 73 million. The number of children under the age of 18 as of 2019. That's a pretty big market. All right. Add value to that market. What do you get when you sell to a child? Well, we got amazing recruitment tool. And one of the things I love about the financial industry is recruiting. I love recruiting. I love talking to other advisors and many agencies and, and brokers and advisors. You have in many cases, the ability to recruit. Maybe you do, maybe you do not. I imagine to some degree you can recruit. Recruit is a beautiful, recruiting is a beautiful thing because you're recruiting value. You're what you're doing, you're building the 10%. All right, here's another number, 48 million children under the age of 11. We're describing the market, 73, 48 million in eight seconds. Every eight seconds, a new child in the US is born. It's a pretty big market. 40%, another number, it's a percent of the US population that are parents. Most parents are uninsured or underinsured. They're also using the wrong vehicles to, to save and grow their money. The question is, how do you reach them? P.S. We didn't even mention grandparents. And there's a boom there. I'm supposed to be some kind of a dramatic boom, boom. All right, but it is a boom because here you go. Leo's going to break down a tool that we have. It's a recruitment tool. It's going to show you how that not only recruiting and creating passive income, developing a warm market to some degree, but also when you're writing life insurance, properly designed whole life insurance for children, what do you need to have? Well, you need to have, and we're going to hit on this point many times, you need to have parents who are properly insured. That's how one becomes three really quickly. All right. This kid here, I, he kills me. I love this guy. I say through the lens of a child, Leo designed these slides. I mean, I can't take any credit for these, these slides at all. These are awesome slides. This is through the lens of a child. This young man has some lenses, 
right here. He's got some specs. <laughs> Help parents see through the lens of a child. See, here's the thing. We have many clients and I, I live and breathe this every day. Uh, I personally have done already over a million dollars of commissions this year using the child millionaire tool as my primary, um, my primary uh, mechanism of uh, talking to clients. And I, I talk to business owners and high net worth individuals all the time. And I pull out a child tool and I say, hey, by the way, um, what would it, what would the, what's a Starbucks a day cost about uh, uh, on, on average, say per month, if you break it down and someone's going to say, that's oh, about $200. And they, and they, and I go, well, I'm going to put a $200. They go, cool. I'm a high net worth individual. I, I, I you know, I, I, why are you showing me a, the price of a Starbucks a day? And what are we talking about coffee for? And you're, you're putting all this, this these, these small numbers into this. I said, I'm going to show you how to help your business. Oh, and I said, by the way, are you a parent? And they go, yeah, I'm a, I'm a parent. Okay, okay good. So you're, I want you to look at your, do you think your, your business, is your business like a child to you? Do you treat your business like a child? They go, yeah, well, I'm going to show you something that you can do for your business or your child. Through the lens of a child, many business owners will see how to treat their business through the lens of a child. Help parents see through the lens of the child. This young man, he's got some lenses. All right. Most Americans have no money saved for their children. So there's a CNBC ACORN study we're going to start quoting here. And we got a, we got a couple slides on this study. So here's some notable points from the CNBC ACORN's article. So 53% of those polled in a recent CNBC ACORN study, invest in you is the name of the survey, said they haven't opened any accounts for their kids. Of those that have, 32% use just regular savings accounts. This is what I was saying at the very beginning of my discussion today is that the traditional buckets, the traditional mechanisms by which we're told to retire at 65 are flawed. They aren't working. 32% of them use regular savings accounts. Holy cow. And this is tragic, tragic stuff. When it comes to putting money aside for their children, many parents feel paralyzed about how much to save and how to get started. Paralyzed, paralyzed with fear. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I am passionate. And I am critical. I'm in this industry because I see a massive opportunity to make a huge amount of money helping a lot of people through the lens of a child, but focus primarily the concept of becoming your own banker, primarily using the product of whole life insurance. So notable points from the article, we went over this. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, let's keep firing. Oh yeah, my, uh, my, my quote at the bottom, parents are usually most motivated to put money aside after their baby is born. But if they don't, they wind up procrastinating uh, you know and that and that's what it is life happens I mean life happens one of the beautiful things about whole life insurance is it kind of creates this rhythm and almost this forced savings but what you're doing is you're you're, you're creating living benefit but then you're also creating that, that generational death benefit and that's all basic stuff I know I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to you guys I know I got a, a, a high powered quality of people I'm in front of here so parents can change their kids financial future for the price of a coffee a day now we're going to get into the coffee our tool We'll, uh, we'll tell you the story. All right, this is my probably my favorite slide. So this is a headline. What we can see here is a little wooden cutout family. And so we talk about the solution, properly structured, mutually owned, dividend paying, whole life insurance. That's it. Let's talk about assets. What is the best asset in the world? What the banks own more? What does Wells Fargo own more than any other asset in the world? I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm gonna, I'm sure m many, if not all of you know, the banks own more whole life insurance than any other asset class. Why would they? It's the best asset you can own. It's the best asset money can buy because what it does is you make a deposit into that asset class for hmm, maybe four or five years. And that asset will start making a deposit back into your life and the lives of every generation to come. There's a few notable figures. Now I'm going to get a little bit kind of economic here. And we're going to do a little bit of a masterclass in infinite banking. Again, infinite banking is a, uh, a very misunderstood. We, we know a lot about what it is. We know a lot about what it is not. Um, I have been a, uh, a student of infinite banking and also most notably Austrian economics. I've been challenging you all, if you can, if you have a pen and paper, um, if you haven't heard of the uh, idea of Austrian economics, I really encourage you to write that down. Go ahead and write down Austrian economics. I'd like you to Google it and learn a little bit about it. Um, <laughs> so Canadians aren't really great at Austrian economics. Do you know who's really good at Austrian economics? In theory, Americans. Americans are capitalists. This is a very good thing. Austrian economics is the pure definition of capitalism. Infinite banking is Austrian economics in action. 
There's a few people that have done very notable things using high cash value, whole life insurance policies or whole life insurance policies in general to fund their businesses. Most notably, we have Henry Ford, Walt Disney, Alex Bell, few characters that you might relate to, R. Nelson Nash. He's also in that conversation. He's the one that identified that life insurance contract, a whole life insurance contract designed the way that it has really unencumbered or changed very much for almost 200 years can be used as a living benefit. And the death benefit is just a bonus. This is a picture of R. Nelson Nash just before he passed away. And this was uh, 30 years ago, R. Nelson Nash, um, and R. Nelson Nash passed away about two years ago. And about 30 years ago, he discovered the use of whole life insurance today by what should we call infinite banking. He identified some human problems and I've kind of touched on the idea of rethinking your thinking. And one of the ways to rethink your thinking about money in your life and in your client's life is through the arrival syndrome, a condition where a person stops learning, growing and turns off the ability to receive inspiration because they already know all there is to know. My question is, why would someone get to that point? Do you think it's because maybe of compensation and fear? A lot of this presentation is about the concept. There is some psychology involved here. And if we only stay in the numbers and we don't understand the psychology of our clients and how they tick and how they operate, we'll never be able to serve them. And then we'll also in our own personal lives, not be able to reach our targets, our goals, and our dreams of becoming wealthy. Because at the end of the day, when we become financial advisors, we're doing it for one of two reasons to make money and to serve. The infinite banking concept is the foundation of our tools. Here's three uh, very traditional books. I showed you and flashed you the, uh, the, the Bible of infinite banking, as it were. And I don't know how many Christians are or are not here, but R. Nelson Nash was a Christian and he actually quotes the Bible in here 17 times. I found that quite interesting. I personally consider the Bible to be one of the best personal development books in the entire world. And you don't necessarily need to be a Christian to understand some of that. The second thing I would uh, like to point out is the warehouse of wealth and a financial uh, peace of mind. There are some 30 books today available on Amazon in and, in and, in and around related to the uh, infinite banking concept. The uh, Becoming Your Own Banker, this book right here, has sold over 500,000 copies and is a bestseller and it is still self-published. David Stearns, who's Nelson's, who I work quite extensively with, who is um, Nelson's son-in-law, still uh, distributes and, and manages the uh, sale of this book. And then it hasn't really changed. There's been five different uh, editions, six actually, I have the fifth edition in front of me. It hasn't been changed very much in 30 years. So before we continue, I'm going to ask you to think about answering these questions. And I think after this, what I'm going to do, if you have any questions or Leo, there's any questions in the chat, I encourage any questions that you have right now to fire those into the chat. I'm going to pause. I'm going to go to some of your questions. And I'd also love to um, just kind of know how we're doing here. Um, just even in the chat, if you could just kind of put a number in the chat between one and 10 on how much value that you're taking away uh, from this presentation uh, so far. And, and, and trust me, believe me, I do this all day, every day. If it's a one or a two, I can handle it and I appreciate the feedback, but there is some value. And then I'm going to do it again at the end of the presentation after we show you our tools. And I'd be curious to see what the numbers look like. So here's a couple of questions, uh, three questions that we have. If you knew at the time when you needed passive income that you would get back everything that you paid into a system tax-free, would you object to putting money into it? And these are questions that I encourage you to even take a screenshot of this slide or to kind of jot this down really quickly or even pull out your phones and take a picture of this because these are questions that we want you to ask your clients. When you are paid for the work that you do, you put all of that money into someone else's bank. And then you write checks from that account to buy things in life. If you owned a banking system, would you want to put all of your money into that bank? See, we use whole life insurance as a banking system. Why I said at the beginning of this conversation that this has nothing to do with rate is because the banking system really is a warehouse and a storage facility of capital. I know when I was a kid, one of the things that uh, I wanted to have a bank of was a bank of candy. I loved candy when I was a kid. A farmer would want to have a bank of crops, maybe soybeans, 
or a bank of uh, livestock. A bank is just a storage facility of something. As human beings, we want nothing more than to have a bank of capital. When the government creates a problem, excessive taxation, for example, and then grants you an exception to the problem, any tax qualified plan, many of the buckets that have got us into the problem that we're in today, aren't you suspicious that you are being manipulated? I would say the ultimate manipulation are the facts. The facts lead to the, 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 the net result that we have been potentially manipulated. Why does money have to be so complicated? Why should we not just do what future generations have done? Use whole life insurance as a bank versus using a bank as a bank. You either pay interest payments to someone else or you give up interest you could have earned by paying for something in cash. Okay, this is called opportunity cost. Let me break this down. Key coaching moment here, okay? Compounded interest. The eighth, the ninth, and the 10th wonder of the world is doing one of three things in your life. You're earning it. You're paying it. You're missing out on the opportunity to earn it. That's another way to say the last thing I just said, what this slide reads. You're either pay interest payments to someone else or you give up the interest you could have earned by paying for something in cash. Finance everything you buy from the banking system that you own. So before I read this quote, um, Leo, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, did we get any numbers, any feedback? How are we looking? Uh, nothing in the chat right now. Fair enough. Let's keep rolling. You need, for, you need for finance during your lifetime. Your need for finance during your lifetime is much greater than your need for protection. This is a personal monetary system for privatized banking with a death benefit thrown in on the side. One of the things I have to do right now is take my financial advisor hat off. Right? I'm talking to, I'm, I'm actually a Canadian. All of our businesses focus in the US. So I can say this. You can't say this, what I'm about to say. It is not, you, you can't say this to your clients, but I'm saying it and, and I'm taking my financial advisor hat off in a, in a practical way. You can't say it to your clients though. The strategy that we're, we're, we're getting here, we're, we're at the very last sentence of this, of, this, uh, of this slide. It says, this is a personal monetary system for privatized banking with a death benefit thrown in on the side. It's basically free life insurance. Don't say that, you'll get in trouble. I promise you, you'll lose your license. You can't say that. But if you really look at it again in a critical sense and you let the math direct you to your conclusions, at the end of the day, five, six years into these policies, the cost of net, the net cost of pure insurance on these things is uh, very, very favorable. They're actually paying you for life insurance. Don't say that to your clients, but you can think it and you can use that to motivate you to get this message out there. The volume of interest you pay is the real problem. See, this is why at the beginning of the conversation, we talked about rate. This doesn't have anything to do with the rate. It has everything to do with the volume of interest. And we're talking about interest rate. I'm not talking about the rate of the interest. And we're talking about the volume of interest. And that's where we, we kind of have a little bit of fun with people. We love to look at mortgages, for example the volume of interest on a mortgage versus the rate. Well, it's a relatively low rate, but the volume of interest that you pay on a 25 year, uh, a 25 year term can be very, very high. The volume of interest you pay is the real problem, not the annual percentage rate. Your personal bank allows you to recapture the interest that one is paying the banks and other financial institutions while giving you the opportunity to grow other assets. Your bank equals your business. This is one of my absolute favorite slides. The first thing I'd like to do uh, for you is um, get you to think about a business right now. One of the things that a lot of people relate to, your clients will always relate to, when you use whole life insurance as an example of a business, and you ask the average person in America, how long does it take for a business to become successful? How long does it take for a business to earn a dollar or uh, you know, get out of the red and get into the black? A lot of people will say five years. They say five years is, the, we've been told that for generations, five years is the golden rule. So when we sell whole life insurance contracts and you put your clients into whole life insurance contracts, are they buying life insurance? We talked a little bit about that. Or are they buying a business? And if they are buying a business, what type of business are they buying? A life insurance contract is a banking business. 
You were buying an asset that looks like a bank, smells like a bank, and feels like a bank. Now, most of you know in this room, if not all of you know, in some cases, maybe more than I, how long does, does it take for a life insurance contract to start giving you back more deposits than you've put in? That's not a beautiful relationship. You must have friends and family members and people that you have wonderful relationships with and or business associates that you do business with. And you know that as long as you're putting deposits into that person's life, eventually that person's gonna, gonna give you a, a, a deposit back. Or another way to put it is if you're putting deposits into that person's life, whether it's time, money, or energy, or emotion, or love, eventually you're gonna go to that person and say, hey, I need to make a withdrawal. Can you help me out with something? And that person's gonna provide for you. Well, they are because you put deposits into their life. No different than a business. You put time, love, money, energy, and emotion into a business. You put time, love, energy, and emotion into a life insurance contract. Eventually, when you go to that contract and in around five years or so, and you go to make a withdrawal, you know what? It's going to give you back more than you put in. Starting your own bank is a lot like starting your own business. You have responsibilities now. You have to fund your business with capital, manage your business well, give it time to grow, make sure you don't steal from your business. Now, key, key point. I'm not sure if any of you have read this book. And this book actually annoys a lot of people. There's uh, more modern versions of this, but it is the foundation of it. Nelson talked about something, and this is the last bullet point on this slide. Nelson talked about something he called stealing the peas. And us old school infinite banking practitioners, we get talking about stealing the peas and people look at us like we're absolutely crazy. Why, why are you talking about a grocery store? Because he uses a grocery store as an analogy to talk about how to manage your relationship with the business that you own that isn't actually a bank. Now, if you go into a grocery store, for example, there's two ways to enter into a grocery store. There's through the front door and through the back door. The customers go through the front door. The employees use the back door. Now, if you are an owner of a grocery store, your own grocery store, you could use the front door or the back door. You could also walk in, take a can of peas off the shelf and walk out the back door and not go out the front door. That's to say that you basically stole the peas. We use this as an example, and Nelson uses this as an example to talk about the importance of taking policy loans, which would be taking the peas, but then going through the front door and not the back door, even though you own the grocery store. This is to say to not steal the peas. What I'm saying right now, from a more practical perspective, is pay your policy loans back. Take a policy loan and pay it back. Take a policy loan and pay it back. All the while, what you're doing is you're capitalizing the system. You're giving your system more energy and more capacity. Now, we won't get into the gory details on the math. Maybe when we lay it over to more of a Q&A, we can talk about that. But again, it's about stewardship. It's about funding up a, a system and a series of life insurance contracts. I have been doing this only for three years, and I own 11 life insurance contracts. I am just getting started. By the time I graduate from this work, I suspect to be having somewhere in 80 to 90 policies. And the reason I knew that is because I want to fund everything I buy from a life insurance contract. I pay my cell phone bill, my Netflix bill, I pay the, uh, my, the, the, my car payment, my gas, it all comes out of a life insurance contract. And then when I get paid, I put it into my banking system. The beautiful thing about taking policy loans, it gives me the capacity and the room inside of the life insurance contract, my bank, to make the deposit back into it. Just rinse and repeat. I use my life insurance contracts just like someone would use a bank. This is the number one question. <laughs> this is the hot topic right here. Everybody wants to know why. The simple, the, the simple reason why. Why not indexed universal life insurance? Inquiring minds want to know. I like that you put that in there, Leo. That's cool. Our number one FAQ when talking to advisors. It's so simple, guys. Would you want your bank account correlated to the stock market? Like, like really? That, that's... That's all, that's all that it is. That's, there's nothing really more to it. And you're all smart people here. It does not work with you, uh, Index Universal Life Insurance. It, it is, there is no way I would ever want my banking system, my capacity to be volatile. I want my banking system, my asset, my, found, my hedge, if you want to call it that, to be rock solid. I want it to do one thing. I want it to grow slowly clawing upwards and forward, receiving a dividend, through us through and designing it with paid up additions. So I'm reinvesting that I'm creating compounded growth in my life. I'm not guilty of, of missed opportunity cost, and I do not have exposure to the stock market. That's the bottom line. That's all there is to it. You cannot do infinite banking 
and des design a banking system or a warehouse of capital with Index Universal Life Insurance. We can get very detailed on it. I spent a lot of time on this subject. I'd be happy to get gory and, and granular with you on it, but it does not work. All life insurance products are actually, actuarially designed to make profit for its owners. We have different corporately owned life insurance companies in uh, North America, and we have uh, a series of uh, life insurance companies that are also mutually owned. So um, index universal life insurance, corporately owned or publicly traded companies and mutually owned companies and whole life insurance are really the ingredients that we're talking about here. Now, where do the profits go? Let's take a look on the left. We have term IUL uh, and, and whole life. And then on the right, we have a participating mutual whole life insurance contract. Now you can see the profit cube in the middle, middle to the left. You have shareholders in Wall Street. On the right, you have policyholders. Here's the bottom line. And, and here's why whole life insurance from a mutual company is, so first off, whole life insurance is a must. A mutual company is a, not a must, but it's very, 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 very uh, highly recommended. And the reason is because a non-mutual life insurance company has two sides to it. They have the participating or the whole life insurance contracts, and they also have the shareholders. If there's any type of systemic failure, say like we had in 2008 all over and uh, stocks start going down, the fear in non-mutually owned life insurance companies is that the plummeting stock price would get offset by taking the uh, participating accounts in the whole life insurance pool of money to prop it up. Now that's kind of taking from, you know, stealing from Peter and giving to Paul. It, it, it's a risk that we don't want to run. Whereas with a mutually owned life insurance company, there's only one pool of money. When you are a policyholder with a mutually owned whole life insurance company, you are an equity partner in that business. You are an owner of that company. One of the other benefits is if you are a uh, policyholder, whole life insurance policyholder with a mutually owned company, if that company ever decides to demutualize, you and your clients will be in line for a windfall of money. It'll be like an IPO. Well, it won't be like one. It is an IPO. They will go public and offer a windfall of stock to those people because they are equity partners. The benefit to becoming your own banker is to own your own bank. And when you own a policy with a mutually whole life insurance contract with a mutually owned policy, you are an owner of that company. And you're not in competition with the shareholders of that company company. And with index universal life insurance, you're not exposed to what happened in 2008. Imagine your bank account did what the stock market did in 2008. It'd be pretty tragic. Oh, yes. Last thing. Fun fact. These are the best thing. Leo, Leo always puts these fun facts in. Less than 2% of term life insurance pay a death benefit. People always say to me, Cole, how, how, how the heck can these life insurance companies, these whole life insurance contracts, companies do so well. Well, they also sell term life insurance. Think about the money that's, and why would you want to bank with a life insurance company versus a bank? Well, think about how rich life insurance companies are. Life insurance companies primarily sell and receive premiums on an annual basis, on a monthly basis for literally hundreds of years in this country, paying out 2% of the money that they took in on death benefit. The reality is, is that people aren't looking to die. People want to live. We're not waking up every day I mean, God forbid we are in, in, a, in a good, serene place and, and we, are, we are happy, but people are, are generally speaking trying to live and not um, move on from this, this world. 2% of the uh, contracts that uh, uh, on, on term life insurance death claims are, are a payout. It's, it's pretty remarkable. You no know, wonder why it's a better place to bank versus an actual bank. Life insurance companies are solvent. They are the most solvent companies in the entire world. Does this mean that all other products are bad? <laughs> well, obviously not. When building a banking system, you want the following. Not all products are bad. I mean, I'm pretty pro whole life insurance. I've made my career, my living uh, with it and in and around it. Um, everything I do is central to whole life insurance. I'll make, I'll make a little kind of digression here. I love crypto. I'm huge into crypto. Uh, part of our business is actually built around it. And the reason is, is because it's just like whole life insurance. It's standardized. It's non-inflationary. It's, 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 it's uh, tactful. It's fungible. 
uh, it, and it's very, very, very similar. That's a whole other conversation we're not going to get into today. But we have a, a major interest in cryptocurrency due to the fact that it works and operates exactly like. And you know, the beautiful thing about the two together is the one is volatile as heck and is all over the place. And you actually make money from that. But that's another story. And the other one just crawls along steady eddy. The beautiful thing is that one is a hedge for the other. So if you own both assets, think about this. We call this the and asset. You fund a whole life insurance contract. Hey, there's that death benefit that's just kind of there when you need it the most, terminal tax time, but yet you have all this cash value. Well, where do you put it? Wouldn't it be a great idea to buy strategically if you knew what you were doing, cryptocurrency? And it's because it's, 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 what that whole life insurance contract does is that rounds out the volatility of the cryptocurrency because it's, it's, it's basically a hedge. So you take a deposit out of your banking system and you buy crypto. This is kind of another story, but it's something that's very, very important to think about right now. Crypto is very, very, very important. So here's, here's, the, um, here's when building a banking system, here's what you, what you need to follow. So guarantee of your principal, first off, guarantee growth, no matter what, contractual guarantees, Everything else has a lot of, uh, what's that say? I can barely read that, Leo. Oh yeah, fine print and moving parts. This is what I was saying about stewardship. Financial literacy is a horse that has been beaten. It entices fear. It's confusing. Financial stewardship, everybody, if they banked you with whole life insurance and there was a systemic relationship in your family generationally, by banking with whole life insurance would automatically receive the death benefit. And more importantly, the people behind you, they're all being born rich millionaires. Every one of them will be born a millionaire as long because, and most importantly, because they have the stewardship and they know what to do with the money when they get it. That's the important thing. It doesn't have anything to do with literacy it has everything to do with stewardship, which means action. This is what my parents did. This is what my grandparents did. This is what I'm going to do. I always say this. If I were president, if I was to run for president, this is what I would do. I would stand at every maternity ward, at every hospital in the United States, and I would hand out two things. I'd hand out a birth certificate to say, welcome to the greatest country in the world. And I'd hand out a life insurance contract. And what would people do with that life insurance contract? They would go and they would get life insurance on that child when it's 15 days old. And they would do hundred or they do $200 a month for 20 years, a net investment of $48,000. And what would that do? That child would be born and that child would graduate from this earth a millionaire and leave their children, your grandchildren, millions and millions of dollars. And more importantly, the stewardship and the responsibility to that money. I'm fired up right now. I'm running for president. I'm Canadian though. So I don't think it's going to work. I'm going to do it anyway. Product aside. Okay. We're into the product. Product aside. If you knew a company, any company, that was profitable every year over a hundred years, how much of that company would you want to, would you, I'm going to read this again. What's the best company in the world to own? And do you want your company, do you want to own a piece of that company? And do you want to own a business that does what it says it's going to do in five years? How many small businesses actually turn a dollar after five years? How many small businesses actually, turn, it's a very low, it's a shockingly low number. Product aside, if you knew a company, any company that was profitable every year, for over a hundred years, I mean, it's like closer to 200 years. How much of that company would you want to own? I'm obsessed with buying life insurance companies, contracts, because not only do I get the asset and I get to own a piece of that company, but I also need the cash value to go and buy other crazy things that I love to buy, like Bitcoin. <laughs> I, would, I would say that like three years ago that I love buying Bitcoin. <laughs> Man, was it controversial. Today, people have FOMO. They're like, I got to learn how to buy. How do I get my clients to buy Bitcoin? Whole life insurance. It's the best way to do it. IBC today. Well, one of the, one of my, so here's the, here's the interesting thing. So there, we got this book here and you're looking at another book in front of you. This book, you're, this, this book written by this young man, Caleb Gwillems. Caleb Gwillems is a, is a genius. He is. It's the opposite of this book right here in a lot of ways. They're saying the exact same thing, but they're coming at it from two different directions. Caleb is very critical, very mathematical about it. He came up with the idea of E equals, e equals MC squared. Well, actually Einstein did, but then Caleb kind of refined it into efficiency equals money, which means compounded and controlled. What is compound interest doing in your life? 
Compounded interest is either working for you, it's working against you, or you're missing out on the opportunity to have it work for you. That's called opportunity cost. Now, if you have the control, the only a life insurance contract, whole life insurance contracts gives you, gives you the compounding, and then it gives you the ability to control the banking function in your life. I all, I encourage you all to go out and read Caleb's book. He talks about the and asset, but I just described with my relationship with cryptocurrency using my life insurance contracts, give me the cash to go and buy more assets because what do wealthy people do? Wealthy people keep their money in motion. Money, wealthy people don't let their money sit anywhere. They use OPM, other people's money. When you own a life insurance contract, whose money are you using? You're not using your money when you take out a policy loan or a collateral assignment or whatever, you, however you extract that cash out of there that's unilaterally yours with no credit checks. You're using the life insurance company's money. That money's still in the contract. You borrowed that money out. And when you borrow that money out, that's borrowed to invest. There's major tax advantages to that. There's tax advantages on tax advantages. All right. Finally, the tools. Okay. I'm pretty much losing my voice because I've been talking so much. Leandro Fernandez is, again, our COO of US operations. He's a licensed advisor and he has been instrumental in building these tools out. Leo is going to take you through the tools. He's going to actually show you how this works. Really important to remember, and Leo is going to break this down for you, is that the tools, these are, these, are, these are first meeting tools. These are not illustration tools. These are tools that give you the ability to show up on that road of value and be in the right lane, not value extract, but you're going to be in the lane of value add. It's a way to show how assets actually can work. It's a tool to be able to show up for you to build a relationship and be credible with your clients instead of sitting down and enticing fear and confusing their mind when they say, no, I don't want to look at any more. Please, Mr. and Mrs. Advisor, I don't want to look at any more spreadsheets. I don't know what all your acronyms mean. You're going to look at the, 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 uh, the first meeting through the lens of a child. And then we have, uh, there's, I think he's going to go through three tools. We actually have other tools that aren't totally related to children, but it's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Leo, take it away, my man. Wow, that was awesome, man. Thank you, Cole, uh, for the introduction. Uh, that was a lot of information, um, a lot of education as well. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take a second right now and open it up and, and do a little mini Q&A on the first part of our presentation. Uh, there was a lot to unpack there. So, you know, we started off with the need for this, uh, the market that's available, that's out there. Uh, then we went into a deep dive into the infinite banking concept. Um, I did see a question in the chat, Cole, if, uh, if you want to help me address, I did jump the gun a little bit and kind of answer it. But um, uh, someone asked, uh, Chris asked, uh, what is the suggested age limit to for this concept to work optimally? Um, the IBC concept is for anyone, right? Uh, anyone that can qualify financially and health-wise. Uh, what we're showing here, the child millionaire, uh, Cole, I put in the chat, you know, generally 15 and under, our tool goes up to age 15, ideally 11 and under, depending on what the contribution is. Do you agree with that? Totally agree. I think it's 15 days old uh, to qualify for a life insurance contract up to about 15 years uh, from the child side. And then once you, you get over the, ch the, the child kind of quote unquote age, into the 16 and up, then you know, you're looking at uh, a more traditional non-child related infinite banking policy or a life insurance contract. So yeah, Leo, you nailed it. Yeah, and uh, just like anything else, it just not just this, this strategy, the younger you start, the better the numbers look, right? So you'll see stuff online all the time. The, the earlier you start investing and putting money in a, in, a, in a stock, in the stock market or wherever the case may be, this works the same way. It needs time to um, to catch up to contributions. It needs time to capitalize. Um, you have to be putting in the right amount to achieve your goals. And that's what our tools are going to show um, what we can do with that. So um, anyone, we have, uh, we have about uh, 30 people in here. Is there anyone right now that has any questions about what we spoke about so far? Uh, or should I just get, off, get on with the tool? Can, can they unmute themselves, Rob, and, and actually speak, or does it have to, they have to go into the chat? It'll be probably Madhouse if uh, we unmute it. Rob, that what do you There's only 30 people. Yeah, that's true. You can have people unmute themselves. 
Um, let me just say, it looks like uh, there is a question from Chris. Chris wants to know the suggested age limit for this concept to work optimally. We, we just answered that. Got it. And uh, another question just popped in. Uh, what's the universe of mutually owned insurance companies? Um, there's a handful. Uh, so uh, ACMG is actually a good resource for some of the, the contracts that this works with. Um, so we, uh, we look at Lafayette Life, we look at uh, Mutual Trust. There are a handful of other companies out there. What you want to look for is a company that has paid dividends uh, for a long time. Uh, there's companies in the United States that have been paying dividends since the year 1847. Um, so uh, when you talk about history through all the ups and downs of the markets, of all the um, catastrophes on earth, um, these companies continue to pay dividends out to their policyholders nonstop. Uh, so when it comes to mutual companies, um, you know, a lot of the big names that are out there, Lafayette, Mutual Trust, Mass Mutual, um, the list goes, there's, there's not a ton of them. All right, because a lot of them are stock companies now. So the difference is that stock companies are owned by stock owners and sharehold shareholders. They have a board of directors and a lot of their decisions are based on what's profitable for the shareholders. Those are companies like AIG um, and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot, uh, North American is another stock company. Um, they do have a sister company that's uh, mutually owned, but they don't do this type of strategy. Um, but, you know, with that said, uh, ACMG is the best resource to figure out what contracts are available and how we can make this strategy work for you. Any other questions? You're welcome. Thank you, Martavius. Just before Leo dives into his, um, his talk on the tools, I mean, the whole, I wanted to just kind of qualify why, just kind of weigh in really quickly on why the talk about the infinite banking concept is the infinite banking concept, we follow uh, what's happening on YouTube and obviously all other social media platforms very, very uh, carefully. And YouTube is the dominant social media platform right now by far. Infinite banking as a concept and as a, as a product and as a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a financial solution is blowing up. It is the probably the biggest, most hot topic uh, out there right now, even to the point where we have Dave Ramsey on a regular basis bashing it. And the, and the reason that Dave Ramsey is bashing it is because he has been promoting for a very long time, buy term, invest the rest. Dave Ramsey is a multimillionaire because he developed a strategy many years ago called buy term, invest the difference. Now, what infinite banking is in opposition to that. So Dave Ramsey has caught our attention. It is a big compliment when Dave Ramsey gets out there and decides almost on a weekly basis right now to go out and bash us, it's due to the fact that we are his competition and he has no choice. If I was Dave Ramsey, I don't know that I would do anything different, but we are at a point in time right now where the, uh, the guard is changing and people are waking up to how Henry Ford, Walt Disney, and Alexander Graham Bell started their companies and got rich. Ultra wealthy people. And I wanna just make this one last point. People kind of say, well, why haven't I heard about this before? Is it too good to be true? And why are more people not doing infinite banking? Well, the only simple really answer is to that is that they have, but you know who it's been? Super wealthy people from generations ago who have had fee for service financial advice that could afford to understand how whole life insurance worked. People never understood that you don't need to be rich to use it. You need hundred dollars a month or $50 a month to get in on a child to get started or less than that. Even as an adult, I have people that have $100 a month policies. It's better than nothing. You don't need to be rich to use it. So the answer, too good to be true. Why are more people not doing it? Simply put, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a one word answer. Well, it's actually a two word answer. It's called the internet. That's it. The internet has leveled the playing field. The internet's not that old. We might, we think it's been around forever. It's been around just less than 20 years. That's it. And people have been searching on the internet dissatisfied by the traditional buckets and the fact that 47% of North Americans are $200 away or less from insolvency. People have gone to the internet. They've gone to Reddit. They've gone to Facebook. They've gone to Twitter. And they said, hey, what are you doing? What are the wealthy people doing? Oh, the wealthy people are using whole life insurance. Wow. Can I do that too? Yes, you can. Hence the infinite banking concept. Okay, Leo, I'm done. 
can't stop this guy. He's on fire. Um, so first, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you through to Child Millionaire. Um, Child Millionaire is our flagship platform. And what the whole purpose of this tool is that it'll allow you to tell a story. OK, it's, it, it's going to allow you to tell that story with the parent, with the grandparent in a way where they're going to be educated. OK, they're going to learn about the concept through the lens of their child. Why? Because I'm a father. I know how if anyone comes to me and says, hey, I have something great that your daughter is going to benefit from. I'm going to look at it. I don't know. Sometimes I don't need to know what it is. As long as I know it's going to be good for her, I want to take a look at it. But guess what? If someone comes to me, you know, minus my licenses, if someone came up to me and said, hey, I have this great retirement plan or I have this great investment opportunity, whatever the case may be, we are inundated with that right now. We can go on Facebook right now, scroll through your newsfeed. You're going to see ad after ad for term insurance, for living benefits, for um, annuities. The list goes on and on. Right. So what do you want to do as an advisor? Do you want to jump into the crowd or do you want to separate yourself, right? The child market, not only, as Cole pointed out earlier, is one of the largest markets that, that are out there. It's the only one that replenishes itself daily, right? Everyone's so focused on baby boomers, which is great. Baby boomers have what? Grandkids, right? So if you're in the baby boomer market, either Medicare or annuities, whatever the case may be, you're leaving money on the table if you're not going to show this tool. OK, and this tool will open more doors for you than most anything else out there. OK, and, and that, that we're going to go through this. And the last time we were on the call, you know, we in an hour, we didn't have a lot of time to go through a lot of the things. But this is not just a calculator. OK, we, we have not just built a calculator for you guys to go out there and show. We built a warm marketing system. And one of the things when an advisor opens opens their doors for the first time they get licensed they walk out they really don't know what to do they either join a multi-level company or they go and get a contract that's not beneficial to them they go out there and they they want to go see people right so what is the first thing that they tell you to do make, make a list of 100 names let's go talk to those people let's go um knock on some doors whatever the case may be but you're talking about the same thing that their cousin Bob just did maybe six months ago and listening to the same presentation, you're not different. Well, what if you're an existing advisor, right? You're an existing advisor and you've already spoken to your warm market about term insurance or IULs or whole life or final expense, whatever the case may be. What if you already beat down your warm market? Well, guess what? Now you have a new conversation because every single person on this call, there's 30, there's 30 people minus me, Rob, and, and Cole. Let's take us out of it. So there's about 25, 28 agents on here. Every single one of you knows somebody that has a kid or grandkid on this call. I don't care who you are. It, it, you, can, you can think about, I'm pretty sure there's four or five people on your brain right now that have children. If not, within striking distance, is a school, elementary school or middle school that needs your assistance with educating their parents about this topic, right? So that's my that's my little soapbox, right? But let's uh, get into the tool um, so we can show you how this baby works. All right. So. Here we go. And uh, I'll go into the, the, the back office in a second. But we built an entire marketing system. This it starts, of course, here with the story. OK, stories sell. Illustrations make people confused. They want to look at all the fine print. They want to start reading things. They want to ask you what happens 100 years from now. You don't know. OK, people learn visually. Cole pointed out earlier, 65 percent of the population learns visually okay and what we want to do is we want to create tools that allow you to tell that story in a visual way in a fun way but simple okay we want to keep it simple because the more complicated you get the concepts that you start discussing across the kitchen table or now in our day and age via zoom 
or WebEx or whatever the case may be, I can pull this up anywhere. I can, I can be at Starbucks and pull it up on my iPad. I can uh, set a meeting tonight and, um, and go and see a client tomorrow, whatever the case may be, or the same night and show them this story, right? So we, we like to keep it simple, right? The first thing that you're gonna see is a contribution slider, okay? And an age slider. So when you're sitting with a client, um, what you wanna do is you wanna ask them how old their kid is, right? How old is their youngest child, right? So we're gonna start at age zero, which means 15 days old, okay? Um, and we're gonna start with a Starbucks a day, which is $200 a month. If every, you know, most parents, if not, you know, you, you might be in the wrong market, but whatever the case may be, most parents are willing to sacrifice a few bucks a day for their children, especially if it's gonna turn out to be something phenomenal. There is some sort of finality to this, uh, 20 years, right? So parents don't have to do this forever. Um, they can do it for 20 years. There's going to be a deposit of about $48,000, okay? What does this show? What does this screen show? That I mean, right off the bat, they can, you can start giving them some sort of idea of what their contribution is going to turn into, right? So a $48,000 one-time you know, contribution over a 20-year period, that's not a ton of money when in the grand scheme of things. At age 75, that will turn to approximately, and I say approximately because our tool and the back end of this tool is thousands upon thousands of illustrations that we've put together, formulas, to get an approximation of how most whole life policies will uh, deliver, right? Now, we could be uh, overshooting some companies. We can be way underperforming some companies. This is not an end-all, be-all tool uh, for an illustration purpose. But the magic of this is, is that if I sit with a client, you know, I've been doing this for over 15 years. And if a client says, you know what, Leo, that looks pretty good so far. What if I can do another $50? I mean, you, you and I both know, what does that mean? If I'm doing an, an illustration, I have to say, okay, Mr. And Mrs. Client, I'll be right back. Go back to the drawing board, putting a new illustration, make sure all my calculations are correct, print out the illustration, go back to the client. This is what an extra $50 is going to do. By the time you get that illustration to them, they forgot you. You're done. Right? So um, our tool is dynamic in a sense that it allows you to change an, uh, it, it change a contribution instantaneously right in front of the client. So if they want to do $50 more, they can see that from $200 to $250, they added at age 75 almost $200,000, right? How many people that you know would exchange, uh, what is that, 12,000 extra for $200,000? Most people would do that, right? Once they see how this thing uh, operates, right? So this front screen uh, down here moves around, it's kind of cool, but this shows all the ages and what the, the values would be at those ages. This light green bar back here is the potential if it was completely maxed out, right? And that's all the way right now, currently we're doing at up to $500, right? Um, so you can get some high net worth individuals to look at this and uh, once they see that, you know, 500 bucks a month for 20 years would give their kid $2 million, there's a lot of people that would probably wanna do that, right? So let's just be a little bit more um, realistic here and say that a Starbucks a day is at $200. Now, when we talk about telling stories, we have tabs on the side here that are going to allow you to tell that story for a client. So every client has a goal for their kids, right? Um, their kids, they, when the kids grow up and they, and they come out and they get delivered, uh, every parent looks at their kid and says, man, you know, I want them to have a better life than I did, right? And they're gonna do everything they can, usually, not all, but usually they want that for their kids, right? So these items here, kind of allow you to tell that story and how they can utilize this cash and how they can teach their children how to utilize this cash, uh, cash not, to, not to invest in the policy, not to just store money, but to create things, right? To create assets. And if you do this the right way and you educate people the right way, they're going to show their children how to create net worth 
in a safe and efficient manner. And that's what this does, right? So this first tab here, we're working on this. You're gonna, you guys are gonna love 2.0, the investment portion. All right, this is just an example of age 20. And this is, remember, each one of these tabs is possible, okay? Doesn't mean that everyone's gonna have the same result because not everyone's gonna behave the same way when they have this cash available. But this 20 year old is gonna have about $49,000 available to them to be able to borrow against when they turn 20 years old. Now, some kids may be a little bit more, uh, immature to do that, but not a child millionaire kid because until age 20, their parents have been talking to them every single day about this policy and how it works and what we're doing to help you fund your future. So by age 20, they're ready to go, right? So what we show here is that a, a uh, 3,000 annual uh, loan from the account coming out from the bank, uh, banking system and going into an external investment. That could be anything, right? But at age 20, maybe they have a job or whatever the case may be. Age 20, Roth IRA. I love Roth IRAs. That, that's my, one of my second bet favorite besides this Roth IRAs. Why? Because they're tax free. They put three grand a year into it for 50 years. Our tool always starts at the age plus whatever equals 70, right? Because that is the retirement age. So that's 50 years they're doing this for, right? They're paying themselves back along the way, but they're recapturing that interest. They're making interest. So on average, if they, if they, achieve a 6% rate of return inside of that Roth IRA, they would have earned 773,000 for a total of $926,000 uh, $926, tax-free asset. Now, what I want you guys to do is jot these numbers down. The reason why is because through the tool, we show how each and every one of these, at least these first three tabs is possible throughout the life of the contract if used properly utilizing the steps within the infinite banking model, right? So if you jot these numbers down, I'm gonna do a little pop quiz. I'm gonna ask you guys in the chat to put in what is this child's net worth by the time we're done, okay? And then you, you tell me if the initial investment of 48,000 is a lot or not, okay? So the second tab here is uh, my favorite, is the family home. Every single person, it's the American dream to own a home, right? It is the American dream to own a home by age 30. Maybe a child is, is going to be, look, they're, they're a grown person by then. But that's usually when people start looking at settling down. Well, I'm in the sunny state of Florida. So, you know, about a nice home is 250000 You know, a decent home, maybe not anymore. But uh, two hundred fifty dollars to 300000 is a nice home, right? One of the things that I know that most parents love is saying, hey, you know what? Here's help with that down payment. Let me help you buy that house. Can most parents do it now? No. Well, Cole said that most people are one paycheck away from insolvency. Well, how do we do that? Well, you put together a plan like this that's very minimal. You can help your child put that down payment. By age 30, if they're using their banking system correctly, they'll have an additional $77,000 available to them to be able to put down on this home. Now, this is your first opportunity to say, Mr. And Mrs. Client, is what you're doing enough for the goal that you have for your kid? Because a $250,000 house or $300,000 house right here, how much down payment would you like your kid to be able to put down? The magic number is always 20%, right? So let's try that, Mr. And Mrs. Client. Well, great. You know, your contribution actually covers that. The down payment is 60,000. There's more than enough there to be able to borrow against. Let's see if it can be 25. Yeah, this, this actually works out really, really well. But what if they wanna buy a more expensive house? Did you see what just happened to the tool? It dropped down because that's no longer possible, All right? 400,000, you can't, you could only get a 15% down payment. Well, if they want a really big house, a really nice house, 15% uh, may not be enough. So Mr. and Mrs. Klein, let's see what, if you really want that for your kid, let's see what happens if we bump that up to 250. Oh, wait a second. Now 20% is possible again. So for an extra $50 more, you can achieve the down payment on a $400,000 house for your kid. Now, is anybody paying attention to this big number down here? All right, so they buy a $400,000 house. This has nothing to do with the policy, but 
If they buy a $400,000 house and it appreciates at a very modest, we added a modest appreciation rate of 2.45%. In 40 years, when they turn 70, they have an asset, okay, that they can utilize, right? So at age 70, what can people do? They can reverse mortgage, they can sell it, they can take out a second mortgage, and they can live off of this one point, a little over million dollar asset, right? Now, if they, we drop this down, obviously the, the price of the, the value of the asset goes down because uh, the starting value is lower, but this is just an estimation, right? So even a, a $350,000 house will create a $922,000 asset. The contribution determines the down payment that's available, right? So in this example, they have 97,000, they'll be able to comfortably put $70,000 on that $350,000 house. So, so far, we have a $922,000 net worth in the house. We have a $926,000 net worth in the investment. And now let's look at an income property. Income property by age 40, you raise a little mogul, right? They wanna go out, they wanna start investing in real assets and some real estate, right? So they go buy themselves an Airbnb or a rental property, whatever the case may be, they buy it for 350,000. They have money for a down payment now because they have 125,000 to put down or they have 125,000 accessible. If they buy a $350,000 property, that's gonna appreciate to around 650. We're, we're being very modest here and say they're gonna get a thousand dollar rental income from that. I mean, the rents around here, they used to be reasonable. Now I feel like I'm back in New York, but with a thousand dollars a month, that's twelve thousand a year for that same thirty year period. They would have collected three hundred sixty thousand dollars in rent. Now if they're smart. They're going to be utilizing that three hundred sixty to put back into their bank, right? But they create another million dollar asset, right? So I hope you guys are writing this stuff down. So those are these three tabs. These three tabs here, if used properly with, again, the principles of the infinite banking platform, they are all possible, okay? Um, this, lot, this next tab here, this is a pretty simple one. If they didn't do anything else and one day they wake up and, and uh, you know, little Jenny says, you know what? I remember my parents did something for me. I just don't remember what, um, but I, let me go look through my files and they put together this plan for me. Well, uh, by age 50, she'll have about $207,000 in cash if she wanted to cash that out, put it into um, some sort of investment a as a lump sum to grow over those next 20 years, those last 20 years as she reached retirement age, she can create a $664,000 asset. So let's look at these four tabs here, right? These top four tabs before we get into the last two. First tab, around age 70, right here, we have $605,000 in cash value, which is what? An asset, okay? Net worth, it can be borrowed against, it can be uh, collateralized, whatever the case may be. It's an asset, 605,000. 926,000, 922,000, $1 million. Uh, anyone in the chat that's been following me and uh, has done the math? Anyone? Well, I don't see anybody typing in, but uh, that's roughly over, that's well over close to three, over $3 million, close to $3 million, right? Hey, Leo, can I just weigh in on one really quick thing? Yes. Oh, and Greg just uh, chimed in. Yeah, 3.5 million. So yeah, you're on it, Greg. And I have, there was a really good question in here from uh, Arnetta. Uh, I'm going to read her question, um, which I love your question, Arnetta. And actually, Leo's going to break some of this down on the back end here really quickly. And it has to do with what we call stacking. So Arnetta's question is, so are they paying this money back at some point, or at least before they're able to take out more? What's so brilliant about this is that it was, remember when I was talking that craziness about stealing the peas? Yeah, right, exactly, Arnetta. So if you're not paying the money back, then you're not stealing the peas. And if you're not paying the money back, you're not creating the capacity to be able to achieve all these different leveraged and asset type infinite banking strategies. You can't go from the first toggle down to the last toggle. So yeah, you nailed it. There's definitely, and what we do with as far as paying the, the, uh, the money back, 
to the policies is uh, it's all built in here. It's all um, actuarially and also um, mathematically built that it is achievable. Uh, and uh, Leo will probably show you one of the stacking um, videos, maybe not the videos, but um, spreadsheets that we have to actually show you, you and your clients. This is actually a downloadable PDF that you can print out in hand or email to your clients that shows them how to achieve all of these different strategies uh, by Arnetta. You nailed it, paying yourself back, paying back your banking system. Love that question. I consider that an advanced question right there. Good for you. That is, that is. And thank you for your contribution now. Um, so three and a half million dollars in net worth we created. So guys, you know, one, we can get blinded by big numbers, right? What I like to do, you know, we can go through that entire stacking process. What I like to do is, is, is focus on the one thing that a client loves about this platform. And I like to tell a story. So I like to focus on a story. To me, the family home is one of the most important things that people want to do for their kids, right? So you can get kind of caught up in all these things and the mathematics behind it. But the fact is, is that if you tell one of these stories well enough, the client's gonna to wanna to see what you can do for their kids, right? Because if at least this is possible, now it's all possible, but if they, you know, they have to learn the entire process and you're gonna teach them that process. But if one of these things is possible and you make it seem to the client that this is something that they can achieve, they're gonna to wanna to do this for their children, right? And then what's gonna happen is they're gonna turn around and say, man, you know, that, that the way that thing works, it works pretty cool. I mean, is there anything like that for, for me, right? So now you're gonna be able to talk about where they're putting their money in their 401k and so on and so forth. And then that's a conversation that is gonna to lead to, and we have another tool that is actually a lead in from here to that, right? So these last two tabs here, this is my favorite one. Why? Because when uh, when little Jenny was born and we started putting this money in that, in that account, we spoke to little Jenny and we taught her this entire concept and we showed her what's possible for her. Now, if, she, if we educated her the right way, she's gonna to wanna to emulate what we did and say, hey, mom and dad, thank you for taking me this far. I wanna go a little bit further. How can I keep you know, putting money into this thing? So it is designed to keep going, right? So we, we designed them so that the 20 years could be a finality, but it doesn't have to be. So when little Jenny is ready, mom and dad are gonna sit down with her and say, hey, you can keep this going if you want. Now, if little Jenny matches her parents' contributions, look what happens to these bottom numbers. This is what the parents did or grandparents. This is what little Jenny can do. She can afford a hundred bucks or 50, or she could afford the whole 200. She understands this concept. She's gonna find $200 a month as well. Look what happens at age 75. Look at the potential. And the last thing that we go through here, and the reason why I'm saving this tab for last is because um, remember earlier, we said that the death benefit is, you know, just a, a side feature or a side benefit of the entire platform, right? Because if the person is using it properly, they should be financing everything that they need to finance through their bank. But the death benefit leaves a legacy, right? And that's what the legacy is for. When uh, Jenny's parents are sitting down and they're thinking about, you know, potentially having grandkids in the future, what legacy can they leave behind through their child? Well, look at this. I mean, Jenny, unfortunately, someday is going to leave this earth, right? But, and she may have kids, right? So if they have grandkids at age 75, we are starting the whole circle over again. And we're refunding, uh, we're recapitalizing that family's trust or that family's legacy. Because at age 75, a little over a little over $1 million in death benefit for this 200 bucks. This is not counting Jenny's contribution. We, not, we didn't calculate that in there. This is the $200 going in. If this goes up, that, that number goes up, right? But that $200 going in will purchase a $1 million tax-free legacy for their grandkids, right? So that's the child millionaire 
tool, right? We want to make it simple. We want to make it easy. We want you to be able to tell a story. Now, this is not just a calculator. This is a marketing system, and I'll get into that in a second. Cole, you want to chime in while I uh, bring that up? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that we love to do, and Leo's is going to queue up uh, some of the back end, some of the marketing. One of the things that we love to do is close clients for you. We are, we love, we're all licensed advisor and we love sitting with our clients. We love sitting with your clients. If ever, as you, you as subscribers, uh, you get uh, access to us as whole life insurance experts, we will coach you. We will sit literally with your clients. We literally love to do it. Uh, we do it all the time. It's actually one of the ways that we learn the most uh, is, is by uh, hearing what your clients have to uh, say and providing that feedback. Um, like I said to you, there's a slide at the end of this presentation that's going to blow your mind. So, you know, hang tight for that. And I think, you know, we're going to go probably keep keep rolling here for another 25, maybe 30 minutes or so. We got a couple more, little more nuggets of value to show you. Um, but yeah, please, um, you know, understand that whole life insurance is the future. And, you know, we are we are here right now, literally to sit with your clients. It is one of our absolute favorite things to do. And so what Leo is going to show you right now is just, you know, Leo, maybe what I'll do is I'll just take them through this. If you would just kind of want to click on the buttons and uh, I'm just kind of rolling right now. So I'll just fire through this really fast. What you have on the back end here is a, a whole whack of marketing tools for you. We're not just giving you a calculator, but we're giving you literally go ahead, Leo, click on anything you want. And uh, we'll, we'll take you through it. One of the things that we always say to anybody that's buying any type of software, go into the tool and click on everything and then go back to whoever it is that sold you the thing and uh, have a bunch of questions for them. You better have a lot of questions for them. You better have questions for us. When you have questions, you'll see Leo and I show up and answer your questions for you. We're not going to send it out to some um, marketing service or you know third party. We are there for you. So what we have packed in here are lots of brochures. We have eBooks built out. These are all things that you can download, print off. You can customize them. They're all white labelable. So you can put your watermark or your own uh, brand right on these things. Things. We have solutions literally critical from 529s, Ross, 401k. We have five different ebooks down below. You, all you got to do is click on those and you can literally send those to your clients and print them off. Below, instructional videos. Uh, we have case studies uh, built out, real time, real live client people uh, that you can use. Um, the um, inside of the, uh, maybe we'll switch over to the um, some of the stacking content if you can uh, queue that up, uh, Leo. One of the um, one of the questions that we had was about uh, repaying back policy loans and how to do that. And we have uh, again downloadable PDFs, uh, how that's available, and and you know how how that all uh, how that's all possible. Uh, and it's um, it's uh, it's very very powerful stuff. Yeah. So here's the the step by step stacking guide. Now this is getting this is going to get a little bit mathematical. Uh, if you just kind of scroll down, we won't get into the, the gory details of it for this conversation, because what does a confused mind do? It says, no, this is a good way to confuse you, but we wanted it. We have to build it because it, it has to be true. It has to be uh, credible, but everything that Leo showed, which was basically $48,000 in $3.5 million out is all achievable through these strategies right here. It's literally plug and play. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. It's really, really that straightforward. And these are all things that you can template and send out to your clients for you. So I think that's pretty good, Leo. I think we've made our point. Let's uh, flip over to the next, uh, the next tool that you want, to, uh, you want to walk through. And I think what we'll do is we'll kind of hit the fast forward button a little bit here because there's a couple people dropping out of the room and I do want to hit, the, hit them with the, the value before uh, you know, we, lose the, uh, we lose the group here. So, um, so let's, uh, let's make these next two tools quick and then we'll... We'll hit them with uh, hit them with the value. Sure. All right. So this next tool is uh, the conversations piece. After you've uh, secured the child um, as a client, um, you want to start talking to the the client about their situation. And um, I'll see if I can increase this uh, this here. Um, hopefully, you guys can see it. Um, it's better in person. So subscribe. <laughs> but. Um, what we're going to talk about is a person that that's going to contribute is this is meant for higher income individuals we have contributions as low as ten thousand dollars what this tool is going to do is going to show them what they can do with this policy not only as a 
uh, as a bank, but as a retirement strategy, right? So they're 25,000 a year, they're 40 years old. Uh, they're doing it for 20 years, they're gonna retire age 70. And at a minimum, they wanna leave behind 10% of the, of the death benefit. You can adjust this however they want. All it does is affect the income. But if they wanna do at least that, what we can show them here is what their annual tax-free income is. Right? So at, they put in half a million dollars over 20 years. They can pull out $48,000 a year till age 100 for 30 years. That gave them $1.4 million in tax-free income with a $500,000 investment. What does that mean? Well, down here, the total wealth generated was $1.8 million. Where does that come from? The $1.4 million tax-free income, a $400,000 tax-free death benefit. So for every dollar that they put into their account, $3.73 was returned to them. That is phenomenal. I don't, I don't know about many people that can get over three times their money in an account that is 100% risk-free, that has guarantees, and that is 100% tax-free. Now, down here for the analytical types, um, we can actually show them what the equivalent of this income would have to be based on their tax rate. So I don't know about you guys, how you guys, you know, we're not getting political here, but taxes have to go up, right? So right now the top tax bracket um, is around 37 to 39%, uh, depending on what, and now capital gains is going up, everything's going up. So let's just say by the time 30 years from now, tax rate is about 45, right? In order to generate this $48,000, they would have to take out from their IRAs or 401ks $88,000 a year in order to match the $48,000 tax-free if they're at a 45% tax bracket. The total before uh, the equivalent income would have to be over $2.6 million in assets to be able to generate that for that amount of time. They're still leaving behind the $400,000 legacy. So the equivalent before tax wealth would have to be around $3 million. Now, is it easier to save 500,000 or is it easier to save $3.64 million in assets, right? To generate a similar income, right? So that's what you wanna ask your client, right? You wanna say, hey, what is gonna be easier for you to do? And what, where do you wanna have your money so you have more control over it? You know why? Because no matter what the tax rate is, this is always gonna do what's up here. Down here, this is where 401ks, IRAs, whatever tax advantage accounts they're in right now, that's what they're gonna lose or that's what they're gonna to have to do in order to match what we can do inside of this uh, product. And this tool is very simple. If your client is 45, you raise the age all the way up to age 60. Again, we use the sliders. If they wanna deposit for a lower amount of time, they can do that. If they want to put more money, we can. Uh, our tool does up to five hundred thousand dollars annually. It shows exactly what they can do, right? Um, so this is for high net worth individuals. Once you're done with the Chan Millionaire conversation, this is the next lead in. Okay, so that's a very simple tool that we're including for you as well. Um, let's uh, move on. All right. Any questions so far? No, all right. The last tool I wanna show you, let's uh, go back to the presentation here. The last tool that Leo just showed you guys is uh, super powerful. It basically picks up where Child Millionaire left off. So once you get over that, over that age and you get into a, a different demographic and you wanna be able to sit down when Child Millionaire opens up that door for you to another market, that tool that you just saw, it allows you to still have that same qualification, that same uh, qualified conversation is showing up, looking a lot differently uh, than um, you would if you're just sitting down in front of a spreadsheet. I mean, instantly what these things do is they instantly make you look like you're in the business, you have the knowledge, you're in the right network, and you're, um, you're practicing what you preach. Uh, so this is, are you going to do bean streams, Leo, right now? Uh, yeah, we, we have a few minutes, we can do that. All right, well, let, let's say for, for those of you that uh, like to recruit, uh, and have that opportunity to recruit. 
this is a great way uh, to to show uh, as a recruitment tool and as a as a as a, a business building tool, as well as it allow it shows you how to uh, create one policy into three. And we 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 just absolutely uh, love this comp and this recruiting tool. There's a reason we call it Beans to Dreams, and uh, Leo will explain that to you. All right. So um, not only for recruiting, I mean, uh, most people are on the call to make some money, right? So some people are sitting here and saying, well, you know, that's all good, but um, I need to feed my family too, or I have kids that I want to put these policies together for, and I want to make some money, right? So um, don't, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about contracting levels and all that stuff. ACMG will take care of you, but mutual whole life companies don't pay like other products, right? So don't associate this with your IUL contracts or your final expense contracts. There's people on Facebook, oh, 140%, whatever the case may be. Uh, mutual whole life companies do not pay that way. They pay a base contract level and maybe some bonuses on top of that, right? So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the quote unquote, the, the lowest base contract level and show you where the contract level means nothing. It's about activity, right? So um, again, these are not the contracts that ACMG offers. Chances are they're going to give you the top contracts that are out there. But this is the best. Uh, this is the the best the the base contract level. So let's say you learn that story really really well. You go out there and you show that tool that we just showed you, the child millionaire tool, to ten families. Okay, they're going to do at least a cup of Dunkin' Donuts a day, which is a hundred dollars a month, right? Forget the Starbucks, the Starbucks, you know, they're bougie, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, let's just do Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the everyday person going to Dunkin' Donuts, a hundred bucks a day. Okay, if you go to 10 families and they're listening- Hey, Leo, just so you know, I don't think you're showing the calculator. Uh, no? Right. No, I don't see it. Sorry about that. It should be. Right. Sorry, guys. I mean, uh, I'm amazed about, that I, I, an hour and a half into this and uh, there's only been one technical glitch and that, that, that this is pretty impressive. Usually in an hour, I have at least four. So great job. How about now? Here you go. Looking good. So contract level 50%, $100 a month, Dunkin' Donuts. If 10 families, the average family has two kids, let's just say half of them say no. And they only say, I only want to do on my favorite kid, one kid, right? Um, so they're going to do that five policies like this is this calculator is based on a 50 week work year i gave you two weeks of vacation to me this is still a part-time agent hundred dollars a month five policies a week for one kid uh each family uh half the family said no only half said yes and and half of them said i'll do it on my favorite kid only which is not legal but you know i'm just being <laughs> just here um $63,000 in extra income. I don't care what else you're doing. You can be doing all the other planning in the world. If you're if you're if you're not talking to this about uh, to this program about uh, to your families right now and your book of business, you're leaving at least $63,000 on the table. But there's more, right? So beans to dreams, the reason why we call it that is because the coffee bean is the smallest component of a cup of coffee. And the child policy is potentially the smallest component of your business, but it can lead to more, right? And that's what we, we do is generate full cups of coffee, right? So 63,000, pretty good. Considering the average agent, nine out of 10 fail. Why? Because they can't make a living. $63,000 is a pretty good uh, living. But most parents are underinsured or uninsured. So that means they at least need some term insurance to be able to... Um, uh, sustain themselves, right, and make this policy work because the one requirement of a child getting a policy is that one of the parents have to have at least two times the coverage. So we got to make that fill that gap. So let's just say you do two of those a week, right? So two of those a week at a 50%, you know, I know some people are like, oh God, I get paid more. And that's fine. This is just an example. We just made you into a six figure earner. Now, from there, um, if you take any of those books, the IBC, the end asset book, and you say, you know what, Mr. And Mrs. Client, you did something great. You protected your child, protected yourself. Here's this book. I want you to read these concepts. It, you can utilize this for retirement planning and, and also the way you use your, your cash as well. We can, do an, we can do a child millionaire plan for you. It's called the end asset. 
Well, on average, those are usually around 500 to 833 dollars a month. Those are a little harder to come by. So I'm only going to say you do, you know what? Let me change that to one a month. Next to 15,900 a year. As an agent, to me, working part time, seeing 10 families selling five kids policies, which is the beginning. The problem is why agents go broke is because they're looking for these clients here, $500 a month. They go broke looking for them when all they have to do is knock on the door and say, hey, listen, I have something for your kids. You want to take a look at it? It's, it's, it's new. It's a phenomenal idea. Let me show it to you. This will lead to this, which will lead to this. And we didn't talk about annuities and rollovers and all that stuff. If you focus on the child market, this can be true to you. Now, if you are a recruiter, and let's cut all these numbers down to one. All right, so that is the bare minimum. Let's cut this down to 50 bucks a month. Can you recruit someone on your team to help make them an extra $45,000 a year by selling one $50 child policy, one $75 term, and one N asset a month, All right? I mean, uh, one a month, and these are per week. $45,000 a year on a super part-time agent, you can recruit a ton of people doing that. So that's the beans to dreams right there. Um, I mean, I love that concept because it, it just shows people how to make money. And that's what that's what we, we want to do is help people and make money at the same time. It's great, Leo. Yeah, you're at your absolute best showing that calculator. And guys, I mean, that one of the things I, again, I love to do is I love to recruit. I love to build the 10%. I love to show the all of the, the B2B and that's what we do. That's why we don't go direct to consumers as advisors. And we spend a lot of our time working with, with, um, with, with you, with you, you are the, you are the people that matter the most because we arm you with the right tools. You go, you can go out and help us change the world. And this is why child millionaire is a solution to teach America about the importance of the infant banking concept. I mean, we don't need to have and talk about IBC. It's not really that important. What is important is action. It's important to understand the difference with infinite banking between the concept and the product. The late R. Nelson Nash says it best. You may have the best message in the world. You may have the best delivery system in the world. You may have the best technique in the world. If you don't have a receptive listener, you don't have a thing. Hitting people where it matters most. People will be more, more receptive when it comes to their children. Okay, Leo, let's, uh, let's keep moving here. We want to talk about the irresistible offer. This is the breakdown. You can thank uh, Rob and his team at American Central for negotiating hard on your behalf with us. You can see what the retail price is for the tools, uh, just the child millionaire tool, and then the American Central pricing, $75 a month for the first year. The wealth access is going to be free. So it's, uh, it's about 900 bucks. Th this is really powerful. So look at, look at the stuff in gold and Leo showed you through the beans to dreams calculator. And you get that, you get that tool as part of this to, to go out and show other really building people on your team and showing that that comp tool says it all, how easy it is to pay for this. Um, plus you get our expertise. You really get us like you will actually literally get us in, in your, uh, in your meetings. And uh, Leo, let's uh, let's go to the, the slide that matter. I promised you guys an amazing slide. This is the most powerful slide in the uh, in the whole thing. And right here, hey Handy, can you unmute yourself, please? Andy, Handy's getting into the, into his or her. Thank you very much. That was probably you, Rob. Thanks. Okay, let's go back, Leo. One more. Let's go back to that. Okay, here it is. One hundred and ten percent money back guarantee. We talked about building the ten percent. We're going to give you ten percent back on your. We're going to give you your money back. And we're going to give you 10%. We have to be true to what we say we're going to do. If you use this tool for 180 days and you don't make your money back on it, basically your 450 bucks <laughs> in the course of 180 days, we will just give you your money back. Plus we will give you 10% back for your time and for your troubles. Um, we've been offering this since day one. We've never given anyone their money back. Um, and we're happy about that, but we would, and we'd happily pay you that. And you know, it, Hey, we, <laughs> you could even probably negotiate that because we haven't given it back to anyone, man, we should start paying compounded interest back to you. You can come and negotiate with us. Good luck with that. All right. So that's it. Hundred, look, look at that. Take a picture of that. How, how can you lose? We'll pay you to go and fail. 
<laughs> but we won't let you. Um, so let's uh, let's keep rolling, Leo. Thanks. So any questions and uh, check out the link here, American Central uh, 25. That, that's, that's the discount that Rob negotiated on your behalf. Um, get on it, guys. Um, our time is uh, obviously your time and uh, handy. Thank you. And our time is your time. And, you know, we would uh, be so uh, thrilled to be able to get to know you and work with you. And, you know, what this stuff, to, you know, to, what, what we're looking at today is, is a solution for tomorrow's problems. So I encourage you all to go and level up your game, get uncomfortable and show up different. That's basically it for us. Let's check the chat really quick. Um, we'd love to field some of your questions. Rob said you can take yourself off mute, I think, if you want to. Is there, way, any, uh, is there a way we can access the calculator? Amanda, yes, of course. Um, buy it uh, and you can get it. And that's, the, uh, that's it right there. There's the link that I think um, Rob or someone on his team or maybe Leo put in the chat. That's awesome, Amanda. And you can reach out to Leo and I and we will literally sit with you and walk you right through. We have a pretty robust team. There's about seven other uh, advisors that are also... Uh, infinite banking practitioners that can, uh, or uh, uh, not qualified infinite banking practitioners. Uh, it's actually really hard, believe it or not, to get accepted at the Nelson Nash Institute, uh, but they are experts in whole life insurance and the child millionaire strategy. I just want to make sure I'm very clear about that. Uh, question here, what carriers do we have access to? Um, that Again, that's a, you know, Rob does an absolutely amazing job arming you. He's got you armed with all the carriers that you need to do this. American Central has uh, a, a, a robust selection uh, of them and um yeah well there was the answer to that as well can i ask a question can you yes me? denise fire away hi um so i am going to a funeral this weekend and i will actually have a lot of family together if i get this how fast can i use it or learn to use it and understand it You're because going this week actually right before i got on this call i was talking to one of my cousins, we've been talking about um, creating, uh, leaving family legacies and things like that. So how fast could I use it to show them um, or learn to use it? Yeah, really fast. As you can see, as Leo was showing you, all it is is just a few sliders and the tool okay. does all the work. You just have to let the numbers appeal to people. And those numbers are big numbers that you see. You slide that little slider across and all you have to do is ba basically pick an age, pick a budget. It's going to show you, say, for forty-eight thousand dollars, that you're guaranteed to turn forty-eight thousand um, dollars into um, value A, B, C, or D. It's really that straightforward. But we would do Denise's uh, your your week your your uh, event or your funeral um, is on this weekend. I mean, we can get on a call with you uh, tomorrow uh, very easily and give you a one-on-one -on -one session on on how to at least show up, uh, being able to walk the walk and talk the talk. Absolutely, no problem. Okay. So, Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank Arnetta, you. Uh, the tool is 75 bucks a month. And it, and if you don't make your money back, it's we pay you 100, 110% back. So the tool is less than, it's more than free. How about that? <laughs> Arnetta, you can't lose. It's, we're, doing, we're, we're giving more money that back to you than the stock market is. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, so, I mean, Rob, uh, do you want to put in the chat um, how they get in contact with you for contracting? I think that would be good. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'll drop that in the chat. Great job, Cole and Leandro. A lot of great information today and value that you guys shared. Um, you know, last week's presentation, we had about 90 brokers and agency owners and GAs throughout the country. Just about everybody subscribed last week, which was exciting to see. If you, have, if you were one of the ones that subscribed last week, we're looking forward to helping you grow your business. You know, anybody who's just joining today, the link is in the chat to get started. Um, you can also email agent services at acmgsales.com if, if you don't have access to the chat right now. Guys, besides the child millionaire tool, if you need life insurance, con the life insurance contracts to go along with this, you can also reach out to agent services at acmgsales.com. Right now, um, we are recommending Lafayette and Mutual Trust. They do fit, work nicely with this. Um, also, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to try to put together a training presentation with some of the carriers that work well with this and um, bring our child millionaire team on also to dive a little bit more with the carriers and things like that. 
Um, other than that, I think guys, a great presentation today though. And, um, everybody else on the call, we're looking forward to helping everybody there grow their business. Thank you, Cole and Leandro and everybody. Hope everybody has a great day today and, uh, happy selling. Thanks guys. Thanks, Rob. Thanks everybody. Rob.